She had no criminal history, no fingerprints in the system. We didn't even know her name for 44 years. Where do detectives even begin to start asking questions? Hi everybody, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Gabby and I'm so happy to have you here. If you've never been here before, never watched any of my videos, have no idea what I do, I cover true crime cases and all the cases that I cover are a little bit older. They're all basically 20 years or older. So if that's something that you might be interested in, maybe go down below, click that subscribe button and also make sure to turn on the post notifications to be notified every time that I upload. So today we're gonna to be going over a case out of Las Vegas, Nevada. We have definitely covered a few cases out of Las Vegas before, now that I think of it. It's not an area with a low crime rate, but surprisingly, it's an area with a lower crime rate than other cities with a similar population size. But its crime rate is higher than the national average. We are going to be taking this one though back to 1979. Las Vegas in the 1970s was relatively close to how it is today, a vibrant and exciting city that attracts those who love entertainment. It is a thrilling destination for those who want a taste of the high life. Although the city is full of energy with its flashy neon lights you can see for miles, it also possesses a much darker side. August 14th of 1979, around 9 p.m., a lone man stumbled across the remains of a girl. Her lifeless body was found lying face down in an empty lot at South Las Vegas Boulevard and East Sahara Avenue. This was where the old El Rancho Vegas Hotel and Casino once stood. The man who found her was just walking through the area when he saw the girl lying in the dirt. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department would be the ones put on the case. She had absolutely no form of identification on her, so she was classified as a Jane Doe. The Clark County Coroner's Office determined, after conducting an autopsy, that she had been deceased only a few hours before being found by the man that night. They guessed that she died roughly three to four hours before he found her. They ruled her cause of death as being homicide as a result of stabbings to her abdomen. She had been stabbed several times. This Jane Doe was Caucasian with brown eyes and wavy shoulder length brunette hair. She stood at five feet, six inches tall and weighed 100 to 105 pounds. They guessed her age to be between 15 to 30 years old, but they were more leaning towards her being in her late teens or early 20s. Her nails on her feet and hands were recently manicured and painted red. She had been wearing blue denim hip hugger style Levi's jeans. Her top was a light blue green button up with sequins and red floral embroidery that tied at the bottom. No shoes were found anywhere near the body and it was obvious that whoever was responsible had taken some of her clothing with them. It didn't seem like her outfit was complete. Even if you look at the shirt she was wearing, it seems like possibly she may have been wearing an undershirt. The jewelry found on her included a white metal chain with a plastic heart pendant with a rose on it, a white metal chain with a uniquely designed pendant containing a turquoise stone, and a white metal plain ring that had been on her right hand. She was not wearing any earrings, her ears had never been pierced. Like I stated before, they believed her age to be between 15 to 30, but even if she was on the older side of that estimate, they were shocked to discover that she had no teeth. All of her teeth had been pulled and she was wearing dentures, but only on the top, not the bottom. She had a maxillary piece on, a mandibular piece was nowhere to be found. Could her killer have taken this as a souvenir as well? That is possible. They believed that her teeth had previously reached a point of being unsalvageable and she had to result in getting them all pulled. Sometimes a person's teeth can suffer greatly during pregnancy for many different reasons, even just simply a pregnant woman craving more sugar, but it didn't seem like this Jane Doe had ever given birth before. They theorized that she could have been walking around barefoot, but in my personal opinion, this was Las Vegas in August, the ground would have been excruciatingly hot I'm sure that she possibly was wearing shoes and the killer maybe took them with him as well. Based on her clothing, primarily her shirt, they believed her to possibly be from Florida. I'm not entirely sure how they landed on Florida out of every sunny Southern state. Could have been the actual style or brand, but they guessed Florida. Some of her clothing was missing, which usually goes hand in hand with a sexual assault, but it did not look as if this Jane Doe had been sexually assaulted in any way. If sexual assault was not the motive and some of her jewelry was left behind ruling out robbery, 
then what was the actual motive? Was it simply one of those situations where someone had a goal to kill, to feed the urge to take an innocent life? That could be. As Lieutenant Jason Johansson of the LVMPD would tell WCPO9 News in 2023, one of the key components of a homicide investigation is knowing who your victim is. If you wanna get a background and a story of who someone was with, where they were supposed to be, how they ended up there, it all starts with identifying the victim. That was their goal, and the department started by scouring Las Vegas for any clues as to who she could have been in life. It did not seem like anyone in the area knew her actual identity, but they did come across one person who reported that they saw her in the area not long before her murder. A female clerk reported seeing her at their liquor store only about an hour or so before what is guessed to be her time of death. This liquor store was not far from where she would later be found but she wasn't at the store alone. On the screen is a composite sketch of what the man looked like who was spotted with her. There was only one singular man she was seen with. The man was Caucasian, thought to be roughly 28 years old, stood at about six feet tall, guessed to have weighed around 165 pounds, had a thin build, brunette hair, and a prominent mustache. The clerk stated that she noticed he spoke softly. This man is actively sought as a suspect in this case. This sketch and the news of the girl found in the lot was spread around the Las Vegas area. Tips flooded the department, but every lead led them nowhere closer to solving this case. The case of a girl they would name Jane Las Vegas Doe, but better known as Sahara Sue, due to her being found near East Sahara Avenue and the Sahara Hotel. They did do a toxicology test on her and it showed that her blood alcohol level was 0.238. A BAC level between 0.15 to 0.30 is considered high risk, so she was pretty intoxicated when she was murdered. She may have been drinking a bit during the day already, possibly with the man she was last seen with, and then they stopped to get more alcohol, drank some more nearby, and then she was murdered, possibly by him or someone else, and dumped in the lot. Here is a map of the area today. Right over here is where the liquor store was in 1979, and over here in this lot, now used for festival grounds, is where her remains were found. Where she was last seen and where her lifeless body was found, even with heavy traffic, was only about a three to four minute walk. I feel like that shows just how incredibly quick something tragic can occur. The day she died was a Tuesday. No, it wasn't a Friday or Saturday when Las Vegas is the most lively, but this was and is a very popular area. It was right on the strip. Her death would have been around five to six o'clock that day. How did no one else see anything suspicious? 1979 was the time before DNA testing, but they did have things like comparing dental charts and comparing fingerprints. She wore dentures, so dental was out of the question, but they were able to collect fingerprints from her. Unfortunately, her prints never matched any prints that they had in their national database for people with criminal charges, so it was never believed that she had a criminal history. She would be laid to rest in Woodlawn Cemetery in Las Vegas, where she would remain until the year of 2003 when her body was exhumed so they could collect DNA from it. There would be really no updates in this case between the years of 1979 when it happened and 2003, 24 years. No suspects or promising tips as to who she was in life. Through the years, her DNA was tested against the DNA of family members of missing girls throughout the country. One girl that they thought for a period of time she could have been was Deborah Ray Meyer, who vanished from Rollins, Wyoming on August 4th of 1974. The thing about Deborah that made them consider her a possible match was the fact that at 14 years old, she wore a full set of dentures. Yes, she went missing five years before Sahara Sue was found, but possibly she could have been living elsewhere for five years and then was murdered in Las Vegas. The DNA comparison came back negative though. Deborah was not Sahara Sue. Deborah is still missing to this day and Royal Russell Long is considered a suspect in her case. Royal Russell Long pleaded guilty to two counts of kidnapping and was sentenced to two life sentences for it. One of the girls managed to escape and one has never been found. He is suspected though as being involved in quite a few other disappearances and possible murders, 
but those have never been proven. Through this method of DNA comparison, Sahara Sioux was ruled out as being at least seven missing girls. As technology advanced through the years, they hoped that one day the right method would come along that would finally give her her name back. Multiple reconstruction photos of her had been done, including two released by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and two done by forensic artist Carl Koppelman, one in 2015 and the other in 2016. These photos were each time spread across the internet in the hopes that someone would recognize her. A few new updates would occur in the year of 2016. Pollen on her clothing was tested to see where she had possibly spent time before her death, and it showed that she had spent time in Napa Valley and Central Valley in California. Forensic palynology or isotope testing though is never 100% correct. This method has been done so many times before in cold cases, especially Jane and John Doe cases, to see where they may have come from or what areas they traveled through. And a lot of the time, they concluded that they came from this or that area. And after they're identified, they discover that they never actually spent time in that area at all during their life. During this same year, a new lead would come into the department. It stated that the girl may have lived in a local trailer park, a trailer park located on East Lake Mead Boulevard in Las Vegas, that she possibly worked at a Holiday Inn or other motel on Las Vegas Boulevard and went by the name Shauna, either spelled with a U or W. Now this sounds like a very detailed tip, like whoever called in regarding it may have known her and remembered her from back in the day, but unfortunately, again, this one went nowhere. Six years later though, in 2022, they decided to go down the route of genetic genealogy. Genetic genealogy is the process of extracting DNA, sometimes they already have the DNA on file, creating a solid DNA profile from it and entering that DNA into a genetic database to locate familial DNA. Try to locate the closest relative to the person to hopefully find out who the person is or was. The department decided to work with Authorum Incorporated, an American corporation specializing in forensic genetic genealogy. Authorum was able to locate some close relatives of the victim and sent their findings over to authorities to continue in their investigation. They spoke to relatives and discovered that these relatives had a loved one who vanished back in 1979. An official DNA comparison was done between the suspected relatives and the Jane Doe, and it was a match. She was positively identified on November 15th of 2023. On December 19th of 2023, her identity was released to the public. After 44 years, Sahara Sue got her name back. She was Gwen Marie Story of Coleraine Township, Hamilton County, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. There has been a little bit of her backstory released to the public, but not much. She had been born on February 23rd of 1960, so she was 19 years old at the time of her murder, and her entire reason for even traveling at all was to locate her biological father, Charles William Buffington, who was living in Southern California at the time. She left her hometown saying goodbye to her family in the summer of 1979. She did not leave alone though. She wasn't just hitchhiking with random people. She left with two male friends of hers. After she left town though, her family never heard from her again, not by letter or phone call. These two friends returned to the area in August, the same month Gwen was murdered. And they told her family that they left her in Las Vegas. Terry Miller, an investigator with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, stated that they are unsure if the man who was seen at the liquor store with her was one of her friends that she left Ohio with. The last thing that we really know about this case at the end of last year is that they are still searching for the two male friends of Gwen's that she left with. Sources state that authorities do not have the names of the two men. This could be due to the family not knowing their names or simply forgetting them over time. So not only are authorities asking the public to help them identify the man that she was last seen with, but also the two men that she traveled with and returned home without her. This is in no way to cast blame on two people that could be completely innocent, but it is extremely coincidental that she was murdered in the exact city she was left in. Plus, why would they have left her there to begin with? They traveled roughly 2,000 miles, about 30 hours across the country, but decided to leave her only a few hours from her final destination. That is just something personally that makes no sense to me. I know people from Southern Cali and people from Las Vegas who travel between the two 
all the time. It does make authorities question, could the two men have actually been responsible in some way? Do you think it's one of those two men who killed Gwen? I, I don't know until I am able to um, interview them and I don't have a name on them either. So uh, we're at the very beginning stages. Could one of these men be the man that she was seen in the liquor store with and maybe the other man just stayed outside while the two grabbed the liquor? We don't know. From my findings, none of her family members have been able to verify if the sketch of the man resembles one of the two men that she left Ohio with. If one of these two men were responsible, why would they have taken her life all the way in Las Vegas and dumped her body on the strip, a place where it obviously would have been found quickly? Had they planned to take her all the way to California and some sort of altercation happened, a drunken altercation, and one of them stabbed her to death? Obviously at this point, we can't say for sure. It could have been one of those situations where they were going to simply just drive through Las Vegas, but then they decided to spend a little bit of time there since it's such an exhilarating place. She could have told them that she wanted to spend a little bit more time there and that she was going to hitchhike the rest of the way to California and they left her there and then not long after something happened to her. Again, we don't know, it's just very odd. Gwen's family released a statement to the public in which they said, Finally, after 44 years of not knowing what happened to our sister Gwen's story, we have news that she had been identified. We are looking for some closure on this case. Our family just wants some answers. We would really appreciate the help. Our family would also like to thank all the many detectives who have worked this case over the years at the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. If you have any information regarding the murder of Gwen Marie Story, who the man in the sketch may be, anything about the two men she left with, anything at all, you are urged to contact the LVMPD's cold case section either by phone at 702-828-3521 or by email at homicide at lvmpd.com. Anonymous tips can be sent through Nevada's Crime Stoppers at 702-385-5555 or at crimestoppersofnv.com. There are so many devastating aspects of this case, but I feel like the part of it to me that really breaks my heart is the fact that she was going to California to find her biological father. And obviously, if you're going to locate a relative of yours, especially a parent, you are feeling like there is a piece of your life that is missing. This girl lost her life while searching for a piece of it. Even if these two men that she traveled with had absolutely nothing to do with her actual murder, they may still hold the key to solving it. We have no idea if this man that she went to the liquor store with was somebody that she was hanging out with previously, the two men who went back to Ohio could have met him at some point. They could have just never went to police regarding it because they did not know that she had been murdered not long after they left her there. I hope that more can be discovered regarding this case very soon. It has been long enough. And if you do live in Las Vegas or the Cincinnati area, I do urge you to possibly share some information regarding this case because you never know, it may get to the right person. But thank you all for taking a little bit of time out of your day to hear about Gwen's case. If there are any other cases that you possibly want me to cover here on my channel, make sure to send those over to gabulosiscaserequests at gmail.com. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day. Stay safe like always and I will hopefully see you all in the next one.